In this tutorial we will cover the user interface of Grasshopper. Grasshopper was originally a plugin for Rhino um, but it became so popular they actually integrated it into Rhino 6. So to access Grasshopper you just type in the command line Grasshopper hit enter and you'll get this new UI that appears and this is the user interface for Grasshopper. Usually what I like to do is minimize my um, my Grasshopper or my Rhino window so it's half the screen and then I'll make my Grasshopper window the other half of the screen and that just uh, will allow me to see whatever I'm doing in Grasshopper appear in, in the Rhino um, environment. And so Grasshopper is a visual programming language um, which means that the interface, even though it's a kind of scripting setup, the interface is visual. So instead of typing syntax for a script like sphere.length, for example, um, you actually use what are called components, and then those components are connected together to produce the script or the visual program, which then produces the geometry within the modeling environment of Rhino. So all of the tools that you're familiar with now in Rhino are reproduced in one way or another within Grasshopper. The big difference between the two is if I'm in Rhino and I type in box, I can just click within the 3D modeling environment to create the box. When you're working in Grasshopper, you have to assign every parameter of that geometry you produce. So I would have to define the length, the width, the height, where it exists in space. All of those things you take for granted in Rhino, you have to reproduce in Grasshopper. The advantage of working in Grasshopper is that it's parametric. So length, width, height are always under your control to change, and then everything within the, the model that you create in Grasshopper will update accordingly. So if I change the width and the width is related to a window within the box, everything will update because I parametrically link them together. So that'll make a little more sense as you get into Grasshopper. Um, the other big thing between the two, so here's Grasshopper and you have what's called the canvas. Uh, this is your working environment. So if you want to start creating a script, you can go to these tabs. These are the different uh, component tabs that you have within Grasshopper, so different commands that you can execute um, exist within here. And so for example, if I just go to my first tab, these are the params, which are basic geometries, basic primitives, input uh, icons, and then also utilities. So if we just make a basic point, we can select this icon here, and then you just drop it into your canvas, and that starts your Grasshopper definition. Now the big difference between Grasshopper and Rhino is that in um, Rhino you create the model and then the model is created and done and Grasshopper you create a, a iteration of the model and it's not actually in the 3D modeling environment until you do what's called baking it. So this is all going to be uh, it'll show up in here but it's not actually in, in Rhino until you bake it and we'll talk about that later. Um, the big uh, thing to know within Grasshopper when you're getting started is that there are two kinds of objects. There's what are called container objects and then also constructors. So container object, if I um, create this point under params, and whenever you see, by the way, this hexagon, this black hexagon around this thing, this is a container object. So this is looking for another object to be plugged into the container, which is this component here. So for example, if I'm in Rhino and I make a point, and I actually model this point within this environment, I have three points here, you can contain that geometry that's really modeled in Rhino into Grasshopper and then operate it on, on it in Grasshopper. So to contain an object, you can select it in Rhino, um, right click on your component, and then say set one point. And then you can select the point that you want to contain. And so you can see my icon, my component, has gone from this orange color, which means it's waiting for something. Um, if I hover over this little balloon here, it says failed to collect data, so there's no point or data in that component. And then this green one, which now is um, functioning, and so whenever you see this light gray one, um, when I selected it's green, but light gray, uh, you know that it's actually correct. So something is happening correctly there. When I select a point, uh, or a component, you can see over on the right now it uh, becomes green over here um, and that just shows that it's being represented or displayed from Grasshopper into Rhino. So one thing to note about container objects, if I delete the object it's containing in Rhino, um, it'll go back to orange because it can no longer find that point. 
So usually what I do if I'm going to contain an object, if I right click on this point, set one point and select the object, is um, I'll go back in Rhino and I'll hide that point. That'll just ensure that I don't accidentally move it or don't accidentally delete it. And so I can still see a representation of it by selecting that component. When I deselect the component, it's red. When I select it, it becomes green. Um, the other thing you can do if I right click on a component, you have the option to preview it on or preview it off. So if I preview it off, it becomes dark gray and I no longer see in Rhino. If I right click and I preview on, it becomes light gray and I see in Rhino. For something as simple as just one component, it doesn't really make a difference, but as soon as you start building complex definitions with multiple components, you'll want to preview on and off different parts of your definition just so it doesn't become visually cluttered within the Rhino environment. Okay, so the other kind of object type is called a constructor. So if I go over here to vector and point, so again, these are just different um, components that you can use in Grasshopper. If I go to vector point and construct point, this would be a constructor object. So this point cannot be contained from a geometry you make in Rhino. This is an entirely Grasshopper um, constructed component. Um, so to create this, you can see every component has a series of inputs, which are on the left, and then outputs, which are on the right. So if I need to construct this, I need to plug in something into these inputs. Um, and there's a few ways to do that. So the first way you can do it is use uh, a panel. And so panels are going to be really helpful components within Grasshopper. They allow you, you can see it has an input and an output, they allow you to plug information in, see what that information is, and then, and then output information from it. They can also contain information that they, you then plug in to another component. So for example, if I double click here and I type in 7, um, I can use that number as the x value for this point. So this point will be built in Cartesian space with an x, y, and z coordinate. One thing to note with panels, if you right click, there's um, an option to do multi-line data. Whenever um, I'm using a panel and I want it to be used as like a numerical value, I always right click and, cl and select multi-line data. That way I know it's using the numerical value 7 as opposed to a text value. Um, if I uh, sometimes if I just leave seven, it'll be reading that as a text value, and that's not what this is looking for. This is looking for an actual numerical value. So I just always get in the habit of doing that. Right click, multi-line data. Whenever you're using a panel for numbers, it's a good habit to get into. So I can use that's one way I can create uh, my x value. I can also use what's called a number slider. So if I go back to params and go to my input, there's an option for a number slider here. And so if I drop that down, the default number slider looks like this. If I want to change the values, you can, you can see now it goes from 0 to 1. I can double click on it and a pop-up will appear and it'll show me the minimum value, the maximum value, and the current value it's set at. You can also change the slider number here from a floating point, which has decimal places, to an integer, which has no decimal places or even numbers or odd numbers. So depending on the kind of input that you want to create with the slider, you can change these values. You can also name this. So I could call this my Y value. Um, so in this case, we'll use a floating point and a number. And if I double click on minimum, since this is a, a Cartesian space, I can have a negative value. It could be negative. So let's just do negative 10.0. And then we'll do the maximum to 10, positive 10. Say OK, and you can see your number slider, the title changes, and now it goes from negative 10 to positive 10. So we use that for the Y value. You could also, over here under params, um, under primitive, use a number or integer um, parameter. So I could use a number, double click on it, or right click on it, and then you can actually change the value here. If you say, let me zoom over here right click, set number, and then add an actual number, so 5.25. Then when you're done, hit commit changes, and that number is now in here. The only drawback is you don't see it, so sometimes I'll right click, and I'll just change the name of that component to 5.25. That way I, I'm, I remember what's in that component. One thing to keep in mind is you can right click in, on most things and change them, so if I want this to be my point, I can change the name of that component to my point. Um, another thing that might be different with your grasshopper is the way your components are displayed. If you go to display, 
you'll notice there's a few, few ways to actually change the visual graphic of your component. If I select draw icons, um, it'll look like the icon. So this is just a different way to show the information. If I say display draw full names, it'll actually include the entire name of each of the inputs and outputs. I think this is a really good way to um, learn Grasshopper. So um, I kind of recommend having draw full na names on just so you know and can predict like what is this component looking for. Um, but for now I'll just keep that off and I, I, I tend to like having it like this with the icons off and the full name shortened. It's just a, a kind of familiar way of, of showing these components to me but it's really up to you. Um, when you download or watch a tutorial just keep in mind that different people have different settings here and so if it looks different that's most likely why and if you're looking for a component and you're like where's the my point component it's probably a normal component that someone changed the name of so just keep that in mind so anyway I now plug this into here and you can see my point is made over here there's the there's the representation of it and these numbers I've set so I can always change these but the the nice thing about a slider is I can then slide it and you can see the point will move in real time based on that slider and so that's a parametric point, right? It's based on the parameter of the Y value, and that Y value can change depending on um, my setting in the slider for it. One really quick thing about inputs and sliders is um, you're gonna use these so frequently, it's such a commonly used component, that there's a really good shortcut, and um, that is by double-clicking in your canvas, you'll get the search window, and this is actually a way to get other components as well, but to make a quick numerical slider on the fly you double click and then you type in the minimum value so if I say minimum 20.25 and then you type in less than and then you type the maximum value so I could say 32 and then this will become a floating point slider because I included two decimal places in one of the numbers so if I just did negative 20 to uh, less than 32 it would be an, an integer slider but because I've included these two decimal places, that's um, how it will determine how many decimal places to include in the slider. So if I hit enter, you can see it makes the slider negative 20.25 to 32. And then again, you can right click and I could change this to, let's change it to Z value. And I'll plug that into my Z. And by the way, if you ever wanna unplug a um, component, you can hold shift and then unplug it, or sorry, hold control and unplug it and then you can plug in a new one or if you plug in one component to a place that's already plugged in it'll just swap that out if you ever want to hold in uh, plug in two components to one input you can hold shift and that will allow you to plug in two components to one input and you, you can see what happened there is it made two points so it made um, it used these values for both points and then it made one point with that value and another point with that value um, again, panels are really helpful. So if I make a panel, I double click and type in panel, and I plug this output, you can see um, what it did. It made two points, point zero and point one. And we'll talk a little bit of what, about what that means later. So that's the basic interface. The other thing I'd like to show you is if you hold down, um, whoops, if you hold down control alt and then click left click on a component, it'll actually show you where that component is so if you're learning and downloading definitions it's a really good habit to get into the, uh, just to see where things are located so control alt left mouse button will allow you to see uh, where those things are located